Hey there guys, and welcome to your fourth video tutorial on SQL injection. Uh, in the previous video, we started to take a look at the theory behind the union statement and how it works to kind of force the database into showing us information that it probably shouldn't normally be showing us through SQL injection. Uh, so we're going to be elaborating a bit more on that concept in this video, and we're going to take a look at how it can actually be used in a uh, SQL injection environment right now. So let's just jump into that. So I'm back over here in our find a user page, which we've been looking at so far uh, in this series as a kind of test page for testing our SQL injection code. And I'm going to be giving you guys a brief introduction on how to use the union statement to force the database into showing us information. Uh, so if we go into our username field right here, uh, we're going to type in our dummy data which is going to be X in this case, and close our data encapsulation with uh, the little uh, single quote right here, which means everything following this is going to be parsed as SQL instead of just text. And if we use the following uh, statement, this allows us to begin our uh, hacking using union. Uh, we use union select, and then everything following union select is just a standard SQL select statement. So uh, let's say union select, uh, in this case we're going to select 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, this may seem counterintuitive because uh, obviously we already know what 1, 2, 3, and 4 is, and so does the database, and we're not really stealing any information from it. But it'll become apparent while we're doing this once we submit the form to the server. But for now we're just going to select 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're going to select it from the users table. And then we're going to give our comment right here so that the rest of the SQL statement is ignored. And we're going to not have any, well, we're hopefully not going to have any uh, super bad errors when we submit this. Mm. Uh, so we'll go ahead and press submit. And we've gotten username 2 and email 4 printed out to the screen. Now, uh, this is kind of an important step in hacking a database. We already figured that uh, this form right here is getting four columns returned from the database query that's being run in the background. Uh, but we don't know which columns are actually being output to the screen. We know that the username is being output and we know that the email address is being output, but how do we know uh, kind of which column in the table those are? Username could be column one, username could be column two, username could be column three. Uh, we don't really know that, but by telling the database to output the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 from its select query, we can see that the username is obviously column number 2, and the email address is obviously column number 4. Now, we can use this information to our advantage when we go into using the union statement in some more creative ways. So now that we know that the columns that are actually being output from the query to the browser are the second and fourth column, how can we use that to our advantage to begin extracting information from the database? Uh, well, I have this uh, small query written up here. It's just calling X and then closing our data encapsulation, and then it's saying to union select one, uh, and then instead of just selecting two like last time, we're actually going to call the function user, which in MySQL, uh, the user function returns the current user who's actually uh, running the queries on the database and then we're just going to use 3 and 4 as our other dummy data like last time. So if we copy this and paste it into our input here you can see uh, when we submit this that the username being returned from the database this time is root at localhost which lets us know that the user being used to query the database is root. So now that we've got the user displayed on screen, what other information can we begin to extract from the database? Well, one of the easiest uh, pieces of information that's also pretty important can be the version number of the database software that's being used on the server. So if we go back into our uh, injection query right here, uh, and we know that the columns being output to the browser are the second columns, or the second column and the fourth column, so we're going to replace the fourth column with uh, this constant right here, just at, at, version. And now if we copy this and paste it into our input and submit, 
we see that the uh, version of the database software being run is 5.5.20 log. And from this, we can kind of begin to look up different exploits for this particular version of database and kind of uh, make our attacks more specific to this version. Uh, that's all I'm going to go over today, guys, in terms of the union statement, but hopefully it's been helpful and a good demonstration of how the union statement can be used to begin gathering information about the database that you're attacking. Uh, so thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.